evening. Welcome to the evening services of the Northfield Church of Christ for Sunday, December the 6th. Uh, as is our usual custom, we will sing several songs interspersed with a couple of prayers, and I'll deliver a message that I hope is uh, useful to each one of us. And so, uh, let's start our song service from Songs of Faith and Praise, if you would turn your songbooks to number 991. 991, this is my father's world. <clears throat> This is my Father's world, and to my listening ears, all nature sings, and round me rings the music of the spheres. This is my Father's world, I rest me in the thought. Of rocks and trees and skies and seas, his hand the wonders wrought. This is my father's world, the birds their carols raise, the morning light, the lily white declare their maker's praise. This is my father's world. He shines in all that's fair. In the rustling grass I hear him pass. He speaks to me everywhere. This is my Father's world. Oh, let me never forget that though the wrong seems off so strong, God is the ruler yet. This is my Father's world. The battle is not done. Jesus, who died, shall be satisfied, and earth and heaven be one. Number 998. It is December. It is the Christmas month. We will sing uh, verses 1 and 3. 1 and 3 of 998. What child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? Whom angels greet with anthems sweet, while shepherds watch are keeping. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Stays to bring him law, the babe, the son of Mary. So bring him incense, gold, and myrrh, compassant king to own him. The King of kings salvation brings. Let loving hearts enthrone him. 
This, this is Christ, the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him love, the babe, the Son of Mary. And number 1006. One thousand six. <clears throat> All three verses. To us a child of hope is born, to us a son is given. Him shall the tribes of earth obey, him all the host of heaven. Him shall the tribes of earth obey, him all the hosts of heaven. His name shall be the Prince of Peace, forevermore adored. The Wonderful, the Counselor, the Great and Mighty Lord. The Wonderful, the Counselor, the Great and Mighty Lord. His power and grace sing still shall spread. His reign no one shall know. Justice shall guard his throne above, and peace abound below. Justice shall guard his throne above, and peace abound below. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our God and Heavenly Father, we just pray that uh, we would have the right frame of mind as we come before you. Uh, we pray that uh, you will accept these songs of praise as they are intended to be, to praise you, the true and living God, who rules throughout the heavens and throughout the earth. There are just uh, so many things that we have to be thankful for. And uh, we just, uh, we can't number them all, or the blessings of life. And we just thank you to Heavenly Father for just smiling richly upon us. We know that those uh, less fortunate in the world, there are those that are hungry and there are those without homes. And we just pray for those people that uh, their pain and their want might in some way be alleviated. I pray to Heavenly Father for those that are on our prayer list here at the Northfield Church of Christ. Help us to look through the bulletins and uh, help us to have those people on our hearts and in our prayers. We know that the prayers of righteous men are uh, rich and powerful. And I pray to Heavenly Father that you would uh, just uh, continue to uh, Help us to be uh, people of holiness and morality and integrity and people of prayer. Be with us through the rest of this service. I pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. And the last song before the lesson is Numbers 997. We'll sing verses 1 and 2, uh, staple uh, <clears throat> Christmas song. <clears throat> oh, come all ye faithful, <clears throat> joyful and triumphant, oh, come 
service uh, this evening. It is December, as I have mentioned already, and in December, uh, as we enter uh, this month, uh, people's thoughts around the world uh, turn to the birth of Jesus Christ. Now, I understand that uh, Christmas, as we call it, has been quite commercialized over the years, and I think that to in many cases, many people have lost the, I guess, the true meaning. But uh, Christmas and Easter are uh, two of the days of the year where people actually stop and think about Jesus. At Easter time, they think about his death and his burial and his resurrection. And at Christmas, they think about his birth. And so I, I think that it would do us well. And for the next three weeks, this week and the following three, I will deliver three messages that are revolved around the birth of Jesus. Uh, I, I'm doing this because what I actually really like us to do is separate fact from fiction. For us to learn about the birth of our Savior. And so uh, the lessons for the next uh, three weeks following this will center around the birth of Christ. Tonight, it's the birth of Christ from God's perspective. Next week, it's Mary, the mother. On the 20th of December, it's about Bethlehem. And on the 27th, it is the virgin birth. Now, you know, there, there are a, a number of uh, legends and traditions about the birth of Christ. There is the Santa Claus and the Saint Nicholas, and people love to... to uh, to uh, 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 recite the poem the night before Christmas. And there are Santa Claus songs out there. And to the point that uh, people have made Santa Claus a, almost a type of Jesus. But what I would like us to kind of concentrate on is going to the Bible to find the only source about the facts that are involved in the birth of Jesus. Now, first of all, December 25th is a man-made day. I think most of us know that. 
I guess a day had to be designated, and the 25th of December was the one that it historically has become Christmas Day. Now, we do know that his birth was historical. And we know this, and you know, maybe I'm flying in the face of uh, not tradition, but flying in the face of how God actually wants us uh, to celebrate things. And the one thing that we have to remember is nowhere in our Bibles does God command us, okay, does, not, does God command us that the birth of Jesus and the day upon which Jesus was born has any more honor than any other day of the year? Okay, I got that out of the way. I feel a little bit better. However, we depend in our spiritual lives upon the life and the teachings of Jesus Christ. His teachings are our guidebook, our literal uh, bodily owner's manual as to how to conduct our lives. And the apostles went on to build upon Jesus's teachings. And then ultimately, uh, we know that God sent Jesus into the world, not just to be the son of man, but as the son of God, but as the son of man, that physical man hung on a cross and suffered and died for us. That physical man laid in the tomb for three days and arose from the dead. And so, that being said, it almost makes sense that if we are going to study about Jesus, the man, and Jesus, the Son of God, that we would spend some time in talking and reflecting a little bit about his birth. As we drive around our neighborhoods, we see lights on people's homes. We see those uh, creches, as they're called, uh, the Magi and the, uh, the baby Jesus. Uh, we see uh, mock-up mangers. Uh, people uh, like to think about the birth of Jesus at this time of the year. Now, the technical word for God coming in the flesh, for Jesus coming to us, is incarnation. And so it might even be more properly stated that instead of talking about the birth of Jesus, that we would talk about the incarnation of Jesus. Now, not only did the Son need to come to be a sacrifice, but by putting on man by putting on humanity, by becoming flesh and blood, he became the perfect and the only real mediator for us between us and God the Father. You know, I, I don't know if you uh, have uh, studied labor and the uh, unions against the corporations as they uh, try to settle on on uh, issues that are good for the corporation and good for the workers. And very, very often, the negotiations go to the point where a mediator is brought in. Now, for a mediator to be effective, the mediator must be very, very familiar with both sides of the issue. And so for the mediator to be really effective, he needs to understand labor and he needs to understand the business end. Well, as a mediator, Jesus meets all the qualifications. Jesus was 100% man and he was 100% God. We may not be able to fathom that concept because it's so deep, 
but it is true. Being God, he understood the nature of God. He told his disciples, if you want to see God, look at me. All right? Uh, as the Son. And especially his holiness uh, as compared to you and I in our sinful state. And so we had the dichotomy here. The perfect Jesus, the Son of God, 100% God, being brought into a sinful world. However, since we're talking about the birth of Christ, then we understand that being man, not only does he understand what God is all about, but he understands what we are all about. He, he understood all the struggles of man. If he stubbed his toe, it hurt. If he didn't eat for a while, he got hungry. If he did not drink for a while, he got thirsty. And we know the epic time early in Jesus' life when he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights and he was tempted by Satan. Now, the Godhead consists of God the Father, Jesus the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit is a member of that Godhead, but the Holy Spirit cannot be a mediator for us. He's got the God part, but he doesn't have the human part. And so he cannot mediate. In Romans chapter 8, verse 26, Paul records these words. In the same way, the Spirit uh, also helps our weaknesses, for we do not know how to pray as we should. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. He intercedes, but he does not mediate. Because of Jesus' unique nature and how special Jesus was as 100% man and 100% God, it constrained Paul to write this to Timothy. What an important scripture this is. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. And Paul writes, for there is one God and one mediator also between God and men, the man Jesus Christ. He puts it out there in as plain black and white terms as you can possibly put it. There's one God, one mediator also between God and man, and that mediator is Jesus Christ. There's just one. Therefore, and, and we're going to talk about Mary a little bit tonight. Mary cannot be a mediatrix. She cannot mediate for us. Now, I know that out there, there is certain religious belief that people pray through Mary and that people try to mediate with God through Mary. Understand, there's nowhere in our scriptures that back that up. No doubt, Mary was special. But she has nothing to do with our salvation other than the fact that within her body, she gave birth to Jesus Christ. When God the Son took on humanity, he did not and never will lay off that human nature part of him. I don't know about you, but when I think about Jesus, I don't think about spiritual. I think about Jesus, the man that walked the earth. And he's still a man. When I think of Jesus sitting at the right hand of God, I, I picture a man sitting at the right hand of God. With that being said, Let's just give a little thought to how all of this came about. Uh, the Luke passage of the birth of Jesus is one of the best, and it's the one that most people refer to. 
If you would turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 1, verses uh, 26 to 33, all right? Luke chapter 1, verses uh, 26 to 33. You will find these words recorded, all right? The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the descendants of David. <clears throat> and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming in, he said to her, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was very perplexed at this statement it, and kept pondering, what kind of salutation was this? This angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. Aren't those just uh, amazing, wonderful, almost spine-tingling words that we find there? Now, Mary had a, uh, Mary had a reaction to this. Mary said, and she confirmed her virginity by saying, how can I do this? Uh, I'm a virgin. Now, what you have to remember was that Mary, uh, being very, very, very special, was the one that God chose to be the vessel in which Jesus was carrying. But it would be not a normal child. Mary was engaged and engagements in those days were binding contracts. Literally, if you were engaged and you did not get married, you got divorced before you even got married. And so it was during this time that the angel came to her. And we see these details. Now, can you imagine? Mary's a teenager. Can you remember how much you knew when you were a teenager? And here she was, the angel Gabriel appeared to her. And of course, she thought the things that you and I would probably think. She said, how can I conceive? I've never been with a man. I am the virgin. Gabriel said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And for that reason, the Holy Child shall be called the Son of God. Hmm. After defending her virginity, Mary in verse 38 said, Behold, the bond slave of the Lord, may it be done to me according to your word. Mary did and carried out exactly what the angel explained to her what would happen. And so as we conclude this lesson and we think ahead to the next uh, lesson, uh, Mary, the mother, will talk more about her next time. We're left here. Jesus not being born yet, just the promise. And understand the promise of those prophecies made in the Old Testament that we like to call messianic prophecies. Those prophecies that foretold not only of where but how Jesus would be born. And we're just going to, to zero in on his birth in this series of lessons. I hope that this has spurred your interest and you will look on and uh, you'll kind of be anxious for the next installment of, um, I guess, Christmas month, uh, December, 
the month in which we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, our Savior, our mediator, the one who knows us and knows God because he is 100% man and 100% God. Let's all pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for this short amount of time that we've had together. I pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you would bless us. I pray that you would give us something to think about this evening as we go into a month when the world actually thinks about your Son. He thinks, it thinks about Jesus coming into the world. Help us during this month as people do think of this season about Jesus. Help us to truly think of the wonderful miracle it was that Mary was impregnated by the Holy Spirit and Jesus uh, was born in that fashion. Only time in history uh, of mankind that this has happened. And it was such a glorious and wonderful event. It, uh, I think, deserves some time on our part to ponder it and study about it just a little bit. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father, through the evening. Help us to stay close to you. Help us to uh, uh, have you on our hearts before we go to sleep and have you on our hearts when we arise tomorrow morning. Be with us. Um, continue to bless us. Forgive us of our sins and help us to be the servants that we ought to be. I pray this prayer in the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. May God bless you all. Amen. Counselor, comfort.